Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model and design post-tension concrete slabs using manual tendons and RAM concept. In this video, we are going to be focusing on modeling distributed post-tension tendons, which will include the process for modeling the tendons, modifying the tendon layout at slab openings or pore strips, and also modifying the profile points at your slab edges. To navigate to one of your post-tension layers, we're going to go to our Layers menu bar item and then select either the Latitude or Longitude pre-stressing plans. For this model, we're going to model our distributed tendons on the latitude direction and our banded tendons in the longitude directions. So at this point, I'm going to select latitude pre-stressing and then go to my manual latitude tendon standard plan. On each manual tendon standard plan, you have two major tools that will help you to model your distributed tendons. The first is the full span tendon panel. This will be used to create a number of tendons in one span at a time. In addition to that, we also have a half span tendon panel. This will be used to create a number of tendons of one segment at a time. And we will get experience using both of these tools in this video. Before you begin drawing tendons, you will first need to specify the default properties for each tool that you're going to be using. To access the default properties, you're going to double click on the tool that you need. We're first going to start with a full panel tendon plan. So we're going to go ahead and double click on this tool within the layer specific toolbar. And here we're going to find several different default tendon properties that we can specify. Several pieces of information will need to be supplied for your post tension tendon parameters before you begin modeling. The first you need to do is to specify the PT system that you will be using for the generated tendons. All the PT systems are available in the tendon criteria through the criteria's menu and can be specified here. You can also specify the number of strands at the selected tendons through the strands per tendon property. After that, you're going to want to select elevation at end one or end two, which will define the vertical distance from the elevation reference to the centroid of the tendon's strand. You can also specify your inflection point ratio. This will determine the distance X from end one in the span to the point where the tendon curvature changes sign. The inflection point ratio is the ratio of X to the distance from end one to end two. A value of 0.2 will place the inflection point 10% of the span distance from end one if end two is at the midspan. And this is a commonly used value. You can also specify the harped parameter, which will specify the tendon segment as having a straight profile as opposed to a parabolic profile. You can enter your half span ratio, which will specify the portion of the half span that this segment represents. The N2 half span ratio must always be greater than the N1 half span ratio. Half span ratios of zero and one represent an entire half span. It is not recommended that these values be changed. Lastly, we also have the option to position profile point two for equal or balanced loads. If two entire half span tendon segments in a single span have different values for end one, then the position profile two, point two for equal balanced load options moves the low point in plan to equilibrate the uplift during the analysis calculation. We will now specify the default tendon properties for the full Band tendon panel that we're going to be creating. We're going to specify our PT system and our strands per tendon. We'll select two for this operation. And then we're going to do your elevation value at end one and end two. Now for each elevation value, you're going to also select your elevation reference point. Here we have several different options to choose from. We can select the absolute elevation, which means the elevation will be relative to the zero datum. This is not typically recommended other than for very complicated geometry. We can also select above the soffit or above the surface. For above the soffit, the elevation will be measured from the soffit elevation to the CGS of the tendon. And above the surface means that the elevation is measured from the surface elevation to the CGS of the tendon. For above the surface option, this value is almost always going to be negative. You can also reference your elevation to the top cover or bottom cover. 
which basically means that the elevation will be measured from the surface elevation to the CGS of the tendon, and these values are typically always positive. For this model, we're going to select our elevation value at end 1, which is our high point of our tendon, at 1.25 inches, and we're going to use our top cover value. Elevation at end 2, which will be your low point of your tendon, we're going to do 10.75 inches, and again, we're going to use our top cover option. As a reminder, the overall slab thickness for our typical slab is 12 inches for this model. We're also going to select an inflection point ratio and check whether or not this value will be harped. Once we're done with the general parameters, we're going to select the advanced parameter. And here we can set the half span ratio at N1 or N2. And we can also specify whether or not we want it to position profile point 2 for equal or balanced loads. Once we are done specifying our properties, we can go ahead and click OK. Now what we're going to notice is that our full span tendon panel icon is still active. So we can just go ahead and start modeling a tendon panel right now. If it wasn't active, a single click will activate this using the default properties that have already been specified. Each of the full span or half span tendon panel tools or commands will require four clicks. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a single bay at a time. Now it may be easier to turn on a CAD background like we've done for this model to get some grid lines to appear. And you may also want to use any of the options available in your snap toolbar. It may also be easier to maybe zoom in on a particular area to ensure that your clicks are being selected correctly. For this model, we are going to select our first point, which will be a high point, and then we're going to select our second high point. Once we're done, we're going to click around to create our quadrilateral. After that, the dialog box will appear, which will allow you to select some different properties for your post-tensioning plan. We can select a parallel plan, which basically means that they are all going to be parallel in the latitude, direction, equally spaced between the tendons. Or we can select splayed, which for this particular quadrilateral won't matter because it's a very regular rectangle. Next, we can do fixed spacing or equal spacing, not to exceed a maximum. We'll go ahead and for this model, select fixed spacing, which will allow us to select the spacing that we want, which will be three feet. We also have an option to skip the start tendon or the end tendon. We would use these properties if we were modeling this tendon panel adjacent to an existing tendon panel we already created. We're going to leave both of those options unselected, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. And we can see here that our first tendons have been created. If we want to see the information more clearly, we can do the up arrow for our text. We can see that each of these tendons represent two strands. We can see the high points and the low points at mid-span. We will now complete this process to model tendons in the adjacent spans. So here we're going to go from this column. We're going to do our four clicks around the perimeter of our full span. Again, we'll be asked to enter the dialog parameters. We're going to select parallel with a fixed spacing. Now in this next area between grid lines D and B, we're going to notice that we have an irregular column layout for this particular area. So we're going to want to take a look at how we're going to lay out our tendons. We have a couple different options here. If we wanted to keep up with the parallel idea, we can continue these tendons straight across. Or if we wanted to be a little bit more consistent with the way our columns are falling, we can do a splayed arrangement, which basically means that the tendons would be automatically connected to the tendons over here, equally spaced at three feet. And then once we got over here, the tendons would be skewed up to this column. And then between here, you'd have the same quantity of tendons as you have between these two grid lines except that the distance between each tendon would be now smaller since the columns are now not in line with each other. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like. We'll go from this column. We'll still draw our four points. 
points. And here we're going to go ahead and select splayed instead of parallel. Again, parallel would just continue these tendons straight across left to right. We're going to select the auto connect option, which basically means when it finds a tendon in this bay, it's going to model a tendon in this bay as well. Once we're done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we're going to notice that now our tendons are skewed to keep the same number of tendons between this, these two grid intersections as these two grid intersections. Now you may have noticed in the last operation that I clicked somewhere that I didn't exactly want. In order to do that, once you start modeling, if you accidentally click somewhere that you didn't intend to, you can right click and either say cancel last point or you can cancel all if you want to start again. Here I'm going to complete the same operation as I did previously. I'm going to go parallel this time. And again, I'm going to use auto connect, meaning I want it to detect a tendon in the adjacent bay. And here you can see that we've completed that operation. Now, if I want to go down for this section down here, again, with my full span tendon icon still activated, I can select this area. Again, I can do parallel or splayed. I'll go ahead and do splayed this time. And again, auto connect. Next, we're going to create a half span tendon panel, which will be used to create a number of tendons one segment at a time, meaning we're only going to be doing half of this instead of the whole thing. Now, just like for the full span tendon panel, your first option is to double click on the tool to specify the parameters. Now, all the default tendon parameters will be the same as the last time you invoked either of these two tools. And you have an option to maybe change the properties if they're a little bit different for a half span panel. For this one, we're going to change our elevation value at N2 to 5 inches, still using the top cover. Once we're satisfied with the rest of the tendon parameters, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then we're ready to start modeling, which is again going to be a four step, four click process. We're going to start by clicking our first column, our second column, our third column, and then our fourth column. And we're again going to be asked the same to provide the same information for how we want these tendons laid out. We're going to go ahead and say parallel and we're going to do auto connect. And here you can see that we have an elevation point at end one, which was auto connected. And then here's our elevation at end two, basically right adjacent to where the slab is terminated. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.